Let's say you want a car that ticks all of the boxes. You want comfort and refinement, but you want technology and luxury as well. You want performance, but also you want it to be nice to drive around town. You want it to go well around corners, but you want off-road performance and you need space for all the family inside. Hey, what about towing? Let's throw that in there as well. This car could be the one for you. This is the all new Range Rover Sport. Now this one in particular does tick a box that I don't particularly like. That's the over $200,000 box in fact. 220 grand before on-road costs, this model here. So massive price tag means it's got big boots to fill. Does it do it? Let's have a closer look. The 2023 Range Rover Sport starts at $137,630 plus on-road costs in its most basic form. That is called a D250 SE, but our test vehicle is at the other end of the pricing spectrum. It's called a first edition D350, which brings an asking price of $196,359 before on-road costs. And while we are waiting for petrol-powered examples to arrive in Australia, which have been delayed, this is effectively a top-spec offering. However, we've got a handful of options here, which has pushed the price of our tester to a Richie Benoit friendly $222,778. This includes rear seat entertainment, a black exterior pack, and a refrigerated center console, amongst other things. One big ticket item here is the Stormer Handling Pack, which throws in rear wheel steering, dynamic air suspension, and a 48 volt active roll control system. This is only available on first edition spec, and it's not cheap, it's over 14 grand. Inside, there is no shortage of nice touches, as you'd expect with a Range Rover that will cost around a quarter of a million dollars by the time it's in the traffic. This includes a curved 13.1 inch infotainment display, 13.7 inch digital instrument cluster, semi aniline leather trimming, 22 way power adjustment front seats with heating, ventilation and memory, four zone climate control, a sliding panoramic sunroof, 19 speaker Meridium 3D sound system. There's also 23 inch alloy wheels and digital LED headlights on the outside and the rear seats on this model get heating, ventilation and electric adjustment. There's a lot more going on here by the way, but it would literally take me hours to get through everything. Now in terms of looks, this is an all new model of course, but it definitely follows on the trends of the previous generation. They've gone with this thing called reductive design, which sounds like a really fancy word. And I think it just means pared back and they've tried to minimalize the exterior as much as they can and kind of soften the look of the car. But I think they've done a great job. And to be honest with you, I've been driving this thing around and it does get a fair few looks, especially in this red color looks really nice. The headlights, they are a matrix style LED, super bright. You can use high beams all the time and not blaze other people on the road, which is cool. But have a look at these bad boys. 23 inch alloy wheels in this specification. That is a massive alloy overall. You'll see a Brembo branded brake in behind there because this is a performance oriented model here. It's a big car, it doesn't need a lot of brakes to stop. And you've got Pirelli Scorpion Zero tires on there. They are an all season style tire. Not sure exactly how well they would go off road, but they should handle most things that this car will be doing. Let's see how that handles later. I'm really particularly interested actually to see how this thing rides because that is a massive wheel. That's a lot of unsprung mass. So let's see how it goes in that regard. A couple of other things here. I do like these door handles. They are flush with the body. They keep it looking nice and clean. And then when you want to get in, press the button, the door handles open up. Another little feature as well, very luxury, I think. Shut the door, leave it ajar, and you've got a soft closed door function there. That is really cool. But otherwise, you can see all of these angles here are just softened off a lot to keep this thing looking as clean as possible. And you can see here with this glass panel on the back here. Firstly, it's a super dark tint on the back, but they've also gone to a lot of effort to do a flush fitment, I suppose. You can't see the frames of the glass here, and it makes for a really cool look, I think, at the back of the vehicle. Big old spoiler on the back. You can see how that roof line really pairs down. The bottom kicks up as well at the same time. That makes for a car that, I've got to say, it does look pretty sharp on the road. And for the old enthusiasts, the lovers of the green oval, 
you know that Land Rover has been moving away from using the Land Rover brand in recent months. They want to put a bit more emphasis on things like Range Rover, Defender and Discovery as separate brands. But the green oval is still there for those rusted on fans and I actually don't mind seeing that. The term D350 refers to the engine, which is a 3-litre twin-turbocharged diesel inline 6. This gets 48-volt mild hybrid assistance and makes 258 kilowatts and 700 newton meters. Very impressive for a six-cylinder diesel. That runs through an eight-speed automatic gearbox and full-time four-wheel drive system. And while it might be your idea of a worst nightmare, this Range Rover Sport actually remains off-road capable. It's got a trick electronically controlled rear diff, height adjustable air suspension, a proper low range transfer case and sophisticated off-road traction control system. But taking those 23 inch wheels off-road does send shivers down my spine. You would expect the interior of a $200,000 Range Rover to be a nice place to spend a lot of time and thankfully it is. There is a really nice look and feel going on here and the build quality up front does feel good as well. I really like this infotainment display. It's got a slight curve to it. This is Land Rover's new operating system. You'll see this on Defenders. You'll see this in other models as well in the future. And it's a great operating system. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. They're wired as well. Digital radio, navigation, and a whole host of other features going on here. There's a nice haptic touch feel happening. And you can do I won't bore you with every single detail because we'll probably be here for hours, but safe to say there's a lot going on in this infotainment. It's fast to react and it's very good. So on top of that infotainment display there, you've also got a digital instrument cluster in front of you here. It's a really nice screen, super crisp, lots of definition going on. And the controls come from the steering wheel here. You've got these buttons here and similar to the infotainment, I suppose, you do really need to sit down and figure out how to drive this little display here because you'll find a lot of different functionality going on in terms of the look and the readout and that sort of thing and just the general feel of it I suppose so once you do get to know it you will really appreciate it but it does take time to learn and then on the door you've got your controls for your seating there there's only a few controls there the additional controls come from the infotainment but you've got some really nice materials here you've got that carbon material and the cloth and the leather as well You've also got your climate controls and you'll see it's all very minimalist. Uh, Land Rover calls it reductive design. They're trying to simplify things visually as much as possible. And that means a lot of the functions here are kind of built in and amongst each other. There are some buttons here for your basic functions, but if you want to control your temperature, you turn this dial up and down. Want to do your fan speed, uh, where is that? You have to have a look here and you have to actually pull that button forward and then you can do your fan speed like that and then you push it in the other direction, and then you can do your seat heating and ventilation. So you do need to, I guess, learn the functions of this car. And once you do figure out where things are hiding, it's easy to use. But first time around, you might be fumbling around a little bit to find things. Speaking of these seats, these are electric seats. They've got 22 different methods of electric adjustment. That includes bolstering, that includes lumbar. They've got heating, ventilation, massaging, memory. They're hugely comfortable. You've even got a little armrest here on the inside, not one on the outside like you'd get in a Range Rover, but these seats, they are really comfortable and I don't think you can ask for much more really in terms of features and functions and that sort of thing than you get in these seats. So that is really nice. So in terms of day-to-day -day practicalities, we've got a chilled center console here. This is a $1,600 option in this model. So it's a bit of money, but I suppose if you want to keep your uh, cucumber sandwiches cold on that long road trip or your leftovers from high tea, that is there and ready to go. Plus there's an extra little storage thing there, which you can put something pretty narrow, I suppose. I'm not sure exactly what, credit cards or something like that. And then, in terms of storage, you can't see a whole lot going on here, but you've got this nice first edition etching in here. This has got this carbon material. Pull that forward. It's actually quite a nice motion as well in that. You've got two cup holders here, nicely sized cup holders for whatever you're driving around and drinking. And then, pull that back. You've got a big storage space, actually. I was really surprised to find this. Very practical and handy. I've got my phone buried in there and some sunnies at the moment, but there's loads of space available in there. 
There's a USB and USB-C power outlet there. There's a wireless charging pad that you might have missed, but it is hiding up in here just below the infotainment display. That is a cool feature. And you've also got twin glove boxes. You've got these buttons here, very fancy to open. You don't have normal buttons in a car like this, right? You've got these remote buttons. Press that. That's all lined with flocking and it looks beautiful, opens nicely. And then you've got this one on the top as well. You've got to open that yourself, but there you go. There's some extra storage there. It's actually really big up top. That'll be handy just for carting stuff around. And you've got a 12 volt power outlet hiding in there as well. So I'm impressed with this car. Actually, I forgot another one. There is a fair bit of storage hiding in this car. Have a look under here, you'll see my hand poking around underneath there. There's an extra spot in there as well for maybe a small purse or a wallet. And then there's an additional USB-C power outlet there. So one thing I do really like about this car is the fact that it looks really nice. It all looks very, you know, bougie, I suppose. But at the same time, it's practical. You do have space to put stuff. You've got power outlets because this might be a family car for you and it's going to get ravaged by the family and it will actually work from that point of view. Keeping this piano black material clean and scratch free will absolutely be a challenge for this vehicle in the future, but otherwise this does work from a day-to-day -day point of view. Well, that experience up front continues into the back here. There's a whole lot going on and people in the back don't really tend to miss out on a whole lot. Firstly, let's talk about comfort and that sort of thing. Yes, this is extremely comfortable in the back. There's lots of leg room. There's lots of headroom. These seats are fantastic. Maybe not as outright adjustable as they are up front, but you do get electric adjustment, which is pretty cool. You don't see that too often in a car in the second row. You've also got some screens here. They are an option. I hope you're sitting down. I am because they are worth $4,000 to fit into this vehicle. I don't know about you, but that does buy a whole lot of iPads and that sort of thing. So if you really want integrated screens, you do have that option. I just wonder if it's really worth that kind of money. I've got to say though, my kids were enjoying mucking around with the screens here, changing the languages. We even got the switch going there for a bit of Mario Kart at one stage, which is cool. But otherwise, this is a really, really nice interior. I do like the fact that the materials do continue on from the front into the back here. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on. As you can see, instead of having a typical speaker, you've got this big piece of material here that covers the speaker. It actually looks really nice overall. There's more carbon going on. There's more leather. We've got a nice little sun blind there for when you want to get a bit of sun out of your eyes. Then you've got air vents up here. You've got air vents in front of the center console there. And if you're worried about missing out on heating and ventilation in the back, don't worry because in this spec, you've got it in the second row. That is pretty luxury, I've got to say. I'll fold down this armrest in the middle here. You've got some cup holders there. I have noticed though, there is a bit of an issue with this car in particular. I'm sure it's an easy fix actually, but this doesn't want to close. Um, some, something's ajar in there or something's going on. I'm not 100% sure. Cup holders do work, so that is nice. When I do open this up, you've got your HDMI inputs here, plus a couple of high output USB-C power outlets there. They're 60 watt in particular, so you could run something like a, a phone dongle or something like that to watch TV in the back here. We were using that for the switch. You could use it to charge a laptop as well or something like that, so that works really well. You don't have to worry about an inverter or whatnot, but once you put that away, you know what? This interior is quite impressive in the second row. As you would expect, we've got an electric tailgate here with this Range Rover, and you've got a boot space that is really big. This is only a five-seater. You cannot get a seven-seat option for the Range Rover Sport, but I think that that does work. This isn't going to be a Kia Carnival competitor, I suppose. This does work for the kind of car it is. Now, if you do need more space than that, you do have drop-down second row which does operate electrically and you'll notice there it actually shifts the front seats forward as well to allow that second row to go down that's a pretty cool party trick but as you can see now the seats don't fold completely flat so if you're going to roll the swag out in the back of this thing you might be a little bit uncomfortable maybe i don't know but it's not going to work with an air mattress definitely but anyway probably going to be staying at a hotel anyway aren't you but I'll put these back here. I think the amount of boot space is good, but I do really like this feature as well. It's a small detail, but it does 
really help for day to day usage. Big cargo divider there, it pops up and it's fairly solid. That means you can put bags in the front there, they're not going to slide around as much. But this also works well for groceries. You can fit a few bags of groceries in there and they're not going to slide around and potentially break. You've got a hard material surface here that's easy for cleaning and that sort of thing. And also, a bit of elastic there. So if you've got like a bottle of wine or a bottle of milk, you can put that in there like that. And you can even nip these things up to keep it nice and tight and secure. It works really well. I wish more cars had this actually. Pop it down with a couple of levers there like that. And I'll show you underneath, we do have a full size spare. Look at that, a full alloy in all of its 23 inches of glory hiding underneath there. Really good to have a full size spare, I think much better than a space saver or anything like that, especially when you've got a vehicle that can go off road. That is a good detail. There's a couple of extra party tricks in the back of this Range Rover Sport as well. Firstly, you can raise and lower the height of the back here because this thing has air suspension. So you wanna drop it down a little bit fit some more stuff in the back you can do that it goes up a fair way as well if you need to do that for whatever reason you do have a tow bar i'm going to show you that trick in a minute but when you are fitting a trailer there's a really cool function here so press this button and you'll see the lights starting to go through all the different methods and that is just to check your actual trailer lights are working that's a really handy feature actually especially if you're towing on your own because normally it's a two-person operation one person sits there goes left right brake to check it all that just simplifies things quite a lot but where is the tow bar, I hear you ask? It is hiding and it's a pretty cool trick to pull it out. Just press one button and out it comes. The best thing about this Range Rover Sport is absolutely, without doubt, the ride quality and the refinement on offer here. This is a new platform that Jaguar Land Rover has developed. It's called MLA Flex. It's used under this car. It's also used under the big Range Rover and it offers great levels of just general refinement. And even though this thing has big 23 inch wheels, it absorbs bumps really nicely. It smooths out imperfect roads really well. And just general noise and that sort of thing is all kept to a really low level. So for things like driving around town, cruising over speed bumps like that, just general everyday driving, this thing is really nice to drive. Under the bonnet, we've got a three liter twin turbocharged diesel six cylinder engine. It's an inline six. This is a new Land Rover engine and it's D350. So that is the highest state of tune for this particular configuration. You've got, you've got 750 Newton meters of torque there and around about 250 kilowatts, which is definitely not too shabby for a diesel engine. There's enough power on offer here for a 5.9 second 0 to 100 dash, according to Jaguar Land Rover's figures. Definitely feels plenty fast. There's lots of torque there and it's nicely responsive. You've got an eight speed ZF automatic gearbox, which is a gearbox which is used in many, many other applications. And in this case, it's calibrated really nicely. We're driving through town at the moment, but I did get the chance to put this on some nice quality country roads to see what it was like from a dynamic sense. And it's a little bit of a different story in that regard, I think. Now, keep in mind, this test car at the moment has an optional Stormer performance pack, which gives a lot of stuff, things like active roll bars, rear wheel steer, and a bunch of other things. It's a $14,000 option, by the way, so it's definitely not cheap. But still, I don't think this is the most perfect large SUV for carving through the back roads. It just doesn't feel as engaging i suppose and it doesn't sort of have that same sort of road holding ability that you'll find in other vehicles of this size naturally it's never going to keep up with a hot hatch through the hairpins i don't think but still i think this is more of a grand tourer i suppose a car that's happier on the long sweepers nice long drives through the countryside rather than attacking that mountain pass or something like that but one benefit of that $14,000 option pack is absolutely rear wheel steer in terms of reducing that turning circle down. You can really notice it and feel it. And it helps when you're trying to drive this thing through urban areas like I am now, doing three point turns and reversing into tight spaces. This thing feels a lot smaller than it actually is. So in summary, I think this Range Rover Sport, it's very impressive overall, more as a smooth and salubrious luxury SUV. A bit less as a sports car, I think. It does okay in that regards, but there are probably better options out there. But for me, it's all about that refinement and smoothness. 
Well, like I alluded to in the introduction, I think the biggest problem with this new Range Rover Sport is the price. The range obviously starts at a much lower place, but what we've got here is over $200,000 worth of large luxury SUV, and that is competing against some pretty cool competition. I'm thinking of things like Audi RS Q8, that's a $220,000 car. We can also get into a Porsche Cayenne with a twin turbo V8 under the bonnet for similar money or even a little bit less. That is pretty compelling, I think, in comparison to this car. Now, what they both can't do is things like a three-ton towing capacity with a lot of integrated towing technology built in and also off-road capability with things like low-range transfer cases, off-road driving modes, and that sort of thing. If you're taking this thing off-road, you're a little bit mad, I think, but you've also got my deepest respect and understanding. This would probably be a very good vehicle off-road despite those 23-inch wheels. For me, the main highlights of this car, definitely the interior, it's really nice to spend time in, high levels of refinement, and that ride comfort, wow, it is actually really good. This is starting to push up into where the Range Rover is, I think, in that regard. It's a really nice car to spend time in. It's definitely not the most dynamically rewarding choice, I think, out there, but in terms of just being a really sumptuous place to spend time behind the wheel, with huge amounts of refinement, this does tick a lot of boxes. This is the power of the internet. Right above me here is a video that I think you should watch. Not because I chose it, because you chose it and YouTube thinks that that is the best car review for you to watch right now.